Welcome to Shift, a college admissions ACT and SAT podcast for a changing world. I'm Tyler, the founder of Achievable, and we have an affordable ACT course that includes everything you need to ace your ACT. A full textbook, tons of ACT questions backed by our memory-enhancing algorithm, videos on key topics, a built-in study planner, and full-length practice exams. You can try it out for free by going to achievable.me, and if you like it, Use the code podcast to get 10% off at checkout. Now, let's get started. Today, we've got Jeffrey Dalton from MindBase with us. And Jeffrey, I'd love if you can introduce yourself. Hey, thanks, Tyler. It's uh, great to be here. So uh, my name is Jeffrey. I have been a teacher and tutor for about 14 years now. Uh, I live and work in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, where I've been for nine and a half years. I do a lot of SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT tutoring, and I also do some project management work for the Department of Education here. And um, uh, yeah, I'm here to talk about my top five SAT math tips. So I'm very excited. Yeah, I'm really excited too. So let's just kick things off here. What is tip number one? It's like the first thing you tell students. <laughs> <laughs> so tip number one is actually this is not the first thing I, I tell students because I don't know. To be honest, I have a I, I I come across students who are weak in verbal and the mm-hmm. and a lot of the techniques that I give them are for students that are weak in verbal. I would say the majority of the students I work with are not math weak. They come to me with very strong math scores. Um, Mm. Or if their math scores are weak, it is 50% of the time it's because they lack some of the reading comprehension uh, skills that they need because they are often second or third language learners of Mm -hmm. uh, English. So my number one tip for math would be to learn to think like the test maker. Um, Mm. And this is a really powerful strategy for strong students who already have a lot of math content knowledge. So Mm -hmm. if if you take a practice test and you review it question by question, I tell students that they should look at every question they got, uh, they encountered, even the ones they got right. You've got to look at the answer choices and you've got to realize that the College Board wrote that question. And in that question, they wrote a tr- sorry each answer choice comes about but from a student making a different mistake right what i what i mean by that is that if you drop a negative sign there'll be a mistake uh, for you to pick mm-hmm. if you if if you misread a critical part of the problem there will be a, a an answer choice designed for the per- for the student who makes that mistake right so Learning to to under like trying to understand some of the critical mistakes that students make that the average student makes can help you pick up speed on the easy and medium questions, and then therefore mm-hmm. give you enough time to tackle all of those hard questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I also think that it's um, I think that it's like important to kind of have this mindset anyway, because what you want to do is start to kind of deconstruct problems as you see more of them, right? Like you Mm. want to, you want to be able to look at a problem and be like, okay, this problem is asking me basically like, do I know like how to calculate this side of a triangle and like the relationships between angles and like a parallelogram and like with triangles inside of it or things like that. Like, You want to know kind of what the rules are that you're being tested as you see a problem, but you're, it's a lot, it's called like diagnosing problems, right? Um, I'm sure you've heard that too. Mm. It's a good way to kind of start to turn the test from a big daunting thing into like a game with a lot of small steps. I love that idea, turning the test into a, into a game. Yes. Because, um, that, takes away a lot of the anxiety of the test when we're, 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 we're not turning it into this big insurmountable uh, beast that, that we have to struggle with. We're turning it into this fascinating puzzle that we have to uh, 
you know, find the answer to. So I do, I love that. Mm -hmm. Great. Cool. I'm glad you like it. Um, well, yeah. So any other thoughts on kind of like thinking like a test maker? I don't know if like, I don't want to put you totally on the spot, but if you have like an example, that would be cool. Or, or are you ready to move on to the next one? No, I do want to say one more thing about thinking like the test maker. And that is that mm -hmm. the most important question I can ask students about any math problem is not what is the right answer? It's what is this question testing? Mm. Because if the student can figure out what the question is testing, then in theory, <laughs> I should have given them a strategy or a technique to approach any question. Right. Given any particular topic. So it's, it's when a student looks at a question and goes, I don't know what this is testing. That's when I go, oh, well, we have a problem. <laughs> so, yes. Know, we, have to, we have to figure that out. Um, so, yeah, no, that's that, why I that think it, that's why it's, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why it's my number one, prop, uh, number one tip, because it is, it's kind of where I want to start with students is, uh, I don't care what the right answer is. I just want to know what the concept is, what concept they're testing. Right. Yeah, it makes a ton of sense. Cool. So then uh, what's tip number two? Um, tip number two is, okay, if you, <laughs> Tyler, if you sat down and took uh, one of the SAT math sections, if it's, it's undou undoubtedly you wouldn't struggle too much with um, many of the concepts but one of the things everybody's going to struggle with is time management and mm -hmm. the question a question i get very often from students is uh what like how do i how do i get faster at the test and and the answer to that is well you don't instead you just do the questions in a, a out of order so for example mm -hmm. halfway through the math section you're going to get a ton of questions that are going to ask you to interpret uh, charts and graphs and tables, and then essentially reading comprehension questions <laughs> on the in the middle of the math section. And these mm -hmm. questions are so time consuming, and students are better off skipping those questions and coming back to them later. So, top tip number two is. Don't do the questions in the order they are presented. Skip around, right? Mm -hmm. You're the test maker now. <laughs> you can do the, the questions in any order you want. Right. Well, and if you are, um, as you know, you talked about in your verbal episode, building an error log, uh, which you should do for all your sections, not just the verbal, um, you mm -hmm. will know which are the question types you're good at and which are the ones that you're less good at so that you can get all the good ones out of the way fast. And then you have more time for, you know, the hard ones later and you know how much time you have to complete those difficult questions. Exactly. And remember, if you're building your error log, one of the questions you're going to have to ask yourself is, what kind of mistake did I make? And guess what? Mm -hmm. Running out of time is a mistake because if you run out of time and you didn't get to like four, five, six, seven questions, maybe you should have planned ahead a little bit and, and, and made sure that those questions that you leave are the time consuming ones. And, and I'm telling you, this is free advice. Guess what the most time-consuming questions are in that SAT math section? It's those charts and graphs questions. They're they're awful. They're awful. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Well, anything else on tip number two? Are you ready for tip number three? I'm ready. Let's keep going. Yeah. All right. Let's keep going. So what is tip number three? So tip number three is Desmos. It is kind of incredible to me as a tutor to think that the College Board gave us this this gift that is a super powerful graphing calculator on every mm -hmm. single SAT math question. It's, it's completely wild. I remember um, March 2023. I, I was prep. I was preparing a whole class of like 15 students for the exam, and after they took the exam. 
I sent them all a, a message and was like, hey, guys, how did the exam go? Did you like, uh, you know, did you use Desmos? How did, Was it very useful? And I swear, half the students said, what's Desmos? What do you mean? And I went, oh, my goodness. I did not incorporate this tool enough in my lessons because it is such a powerful piece of software um, that, yeah, I mean, it's so many questions can be solved using Desmos. It's, it's, there are whole concepts that I used to teach on the old paper base SAT that I no longer have to teach because Desmos makes them uh, a walk in the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So like the Desmos calculator is super good, right? Um, what are some of the best use cases for it? Like I, you know, I think that maybe if you're, if you're really paranoid, like you could use it for even like basic multiplication and stuff, just to make sure you don't make any mistakes with your mental math. But also I feel like, you know, there, that's probably not the most efficient thing you could do. And there's probably some things that where it's like, it's very good to use Desmos for these specific things. Uh, anytime, uh, a question asks you about the equation of a line or slope or y-intercept, you can pop that into Desmos. Mm -hmm. Anytime a, there's a systems of equations question, you can put that into Desmos. Students don't realize that Desmos has a feature where you can enter uh, an xy table, and then you can actually uh, have it build a regression line, uh, essentially like a, like a scatter plot. Um, with a, with a line of best fit. That's that's what I mean by a regression line. Like there are so many different ways you can use Desmos to um, just make a question easier or solve it faster. But uh, not only that, I find that if you get good at using Desmos, you'll get a couple of SAT questions where they'll give you, say, four quadratic equations in each in the answer choices, mm -hmm. and if you if you have them if you have you bring a mouse if you get good at entering these into Desmos, it is faster to just type each answer choice into Desmos than it is to actually go through the process of understanding what the question's asking and applying uh, the quadratic formula, for example, or anything like that. So. Yeah, might as well, right? Can you know that Desmos is going to be correct to an extent? Definitely. If you type the right thing in, <laughs> it should it should yeah. always be correct. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. All right. Yeah, I mean, I think that's also just like the best way to learn how to use Desmos is use Desmos for your math homework. Use Desmos kind of all the time. Yes, you probably have a graphing calculator. Yes, you probably have you know the ability to do it by hand but if you want to get practice using the tool use the tool use it outside of even sat prep and that will probably help too yeah in fact i've incorporated into my curriculum some entire lessons that are just built around using desmos and i will have students say uh Oh, but I can solve this a different way, or oh, but I could use my calculator, or I could do this by hand. And I, I think this might be a sign that I am, uh, am getting a little too old for this. But sometimes I'll just be like, I don't care, <laughs> do it my way. <laughs> it's my way or the highway. Uh, but yeah. my, you know, my intention is, you know, learn to use Desmos because you have to. Yeah. Now that makes a lot of sense. All right, ready for tip number four. All right, so tip number four is something I have done with uh, GRE and GMAT students forever, and I'd say it's now come for my SAT students, but that is uh, park your thinking on paper. Put, put pen to paper. Do not try to solve everything in your head. It is a recipe for careless mistakes. Hmm. So... Uh, and this is be this is also true because it's a uh, sorry this is because it's a digital exam that so many students they're like oh but it's time consuming for me to write things down and I'm like yeah but it's it's time consuming to get a question wrong as well like you know <laughs> take your pick here mm -hmm. um, well it's worse than time consuming so, you don't get that question back <laughs> true exactly. 
So that's why, um, yeah, I'm a huge, I'm a huge believer in, you know, sometimes a student will, will, will get a question wrong and I'll simply ask them, um, Hey, what does your paper look like? And they'll kind of, uh, you know, they didn't write anything down. And I'm like, Oh, that might be why we got it wrong. And, and mm -hmm. very often I, I, I won't give them any other advice than that. They'll redo the question. They'll get it right. And they'll say, huh, crazy. <laughs> mm. All I all I did was um, write down what was going on in my brain, and then I didn't make that careless error, and I didn't drop that negative sign, and I didn't accidentally flip that fraction. So, do it. Put that yeah. in paper. Yeah, and it's it's you know a little bit in contrast with the Desmos tip from before, but I think the answer is more just like don't do math in your head, right? <laughs> like, and, yes. and that's the other thing too is when you. When you're answering a problem and you know you do have the work done on paper, you can kind of follow your steps and you can see if you maybe made a mistake when you're doing like a final pass before you check the box on the answer choices, and you won't be able to do that if it's all in your head. Totally, totally. Great. And then, what is your uh, your final tip here? Fifth tip. Okay, so tip number five is a is a fitting place to to end because it is something that I, ah, um, it's something that I struggle to teach because it's not, it's not related to the SAT. It's not related to math. It's not related to verbal, but it is learn some mindfulness techniques to manage your anxiety because students get anxious. Tests make them nervous. Nervousness is the enemy of accuracy, and accuracy is the enemy of high scores. So even simple, simple breathing techniques, even simple, um, you know, recognition of, okay, I am being emotionally overwhelmed by the difficulty of this question. Even coming to that realization can help you uh, say, okay, I need to do something to calm myself down so that I don't panic. Uh, in, mm -hmm. in the same way that I want to teach students, like, okay, when you see uh, the equation of a line, you know, that should make you think, okay, I got to find the slope, I got to find the y-intercept. Mm -hmm. When you feel your heart racing, when you feel yourself sweating over a question, you know, that should be the sign that, oh, okay, I've got to, I've got to focus on my breathing, I've got to uh, you know, do something to help mitigate my nerves. Um, it's, su it's super important. I think it's something that some tutors spend a lot of time on and some do not spend a lot of time on, but it can be a game changer for mm -hmm. some students, for sure. Yeah. Well, I think also the other thing, too, is like, at least in my opinion, kind of these tips are test anxiety tips, right? Like like doing the questions in the order from kind of easiest for you to hardest for you. Thinking like the test maker so that the, the test is less of a sort of daunting thing and more of like a puzzle you're trying to figure out, right? Using mm -hmm. Desmos and writing things down so that you're not worried about your mistakes and you're just going through a process. Like, I think all of these are things that will contribute to lessening your test anxiety, or at least they would for me, because I feel mm. like you, like, the, I, for me at least, where anxiety comes from on tests and stuff is like the unknown and kind of this sense of mm. like, I don't even know if I'm like, Am I doing good? Am I not doing good? Am I <laughs> ahead? Am I behind? Do I have enough time? Right? Like it's like yeah. that kind of like that kind of like uh like the, like the uncertainty creates the anxiety for me. So I feel like by following your other four tips, you're putting a lot more certainty into the process, and then at, at least you're kind of doing it right, and I think that helps. Yeah, you know, this is a good observation here, Tyler. I didn't realize that my my top five math tips kind of don't have much to do 
with math. They're all just uh, approaches. They're all just uh, things to things to keep in mind, or or non math related things uh, that you that you should do. Uh, and it's funny because I do say this in in my lessons all uh, I uh, all the time, or I have it's part of my patter where I say like, guys, I'm not your math teacher. Like I don't teach math. Uh, I teach the SAT. You know, like it, I, I'll mm-hmm. never say show your work. I'll just say, did you circle the right answer? Like, okay, good. Like uh, obviously, I do want you know, I do want them to do math. I do want to see some of their work shown so that I can figure out where their mistakes are, but the uh the 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 impetus behind my my telling them that is that I want them to you know realize that there are non math related things you can do to to beat the math section yeah mhm great well yeah i think that all is really good tips and um i feel pretty ready to wrap this up do you have any kind of final thoughts before we finish here uh no at the moment i feel like i've said all that needs to be said <laughs> yeah well great well thank you so much this has been shift a college admissions podcast for a changing world hosted by tyler from achievable with jeffrey dalton from mindvase and you can get a free trial of achievables act course by going to achievable.me and use the code podcast to get 10 percent off 